all is not lost without a lathe in the shop. You can still make a bowl and we can show you how. I've made quite a few bowls over the years. They make excellent gifts, different wood choices, different shapes. They're fun to build. I don't own a lathe, but as you can see here, you don't need a lathe to make a bowl. A router, router bit, call it extension, a template, and a little bit of imagination, and you can route a bowl. At the heart of the system is the CMT tray and bowl bit. It's a half inch shank bit with a bearing that rides against the template. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter with a flat bottom and a quarter inch radius to help shape the inner bowl. The other piece of this puzzle is the collet extension. Again, it's a half inch shank and it has a half inch collet for the bit that you'll be using. The collet extension allows you to add about two and a quarter inches to the router's depth of cut. I like using a plunge router when I'm routing bowls. It just makes the depth of cut change so much easier. And any router with a two horsepower motor or more is gonna easily handle that CMT bowl and tray bit. You'll need to replace the base of your router with something wider. What you see here is a 12 inch by 12 inch by half inch piece of clear acrylic. Although I do think 3 8 would probably work just as well. Either one is going to eliminate flexing. I prefer using the clear acrylic because I wanna see what I'm doing when I'm doing it. And one more point about the size of the base, it's somewhat dependent upon the size of the bowl you're trying to route. The base itself needs to be wider than the template opening that you're using. Most of my templates are made from MDF. Various sizes, various shapes, but I do have one that's store-bought, made from acrylic. That one was just going to be easier to buy than it was for me to make. Next up is the bowl blanks. And I'm going to route a bowl using this template. So let's just take a look at the blanks. Personally, I like the look of cherry, walnut, mahogany, sapelli, and I really like the look of Padauk. These boards have been milled to various thicknesses, from a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch to half inch up to three quarters of an inch. And the glued up blank, they measure about two inches up to two and a half inches in thickness. And though you don't really need to at this time, I really like to clean up one edge with the jointer and then I'll trim up the other side at the table saw. These blanks are oversized by about three quarters of an inch in width and three inches in length. And the three inches in length is going to allow me to screw that template down to the blank. And you'll notice that I've drawn some center lines on the blanks, and that's going to help me center that template to the blank. Once the blank is secured to the workbench, it's time to get to routing. It's best not to take too big a cut on any one pass. I usually aim for about an eighth of an inch. It'll just be easier on the router bit and you. Just be sure the router bearing is fully engaging the template and eventually the bowl side. I usually route the perimeter first and work my way to the center. And make no mistake, dust collection will be your best friend for a while. Lower the bit and continue the process until you've reached final depth. From time to time, you're going to need to stop and vacuum out the waste. You'll want to check your progress often. With so many chips flying, some are going to stick to the side. You'll probably feel it when the bearing rolls over them. Just stop and clear them off. And do a final pass around the perimeter at each depth if you think it's necessary. And don't get greedy, eighth of an inch at a time. Things start to take shape as you pass through one layer into the next and the wood chips begin to change color. I reached final depth when the bottom layer of walnut was exposed at about a quarter of an inch. Like I said, it's a messy process, but have fun with it. Because when you're done, you're going to have something really cool. The next step is going to be to remove the template 
Here I'm using a 3 inch Velcro mandrel with 220 grit sandpaper. And I'll do the same to the interior wall again with some 220 grit sandpaper. It's time to work toward the final shape. I'll use a compass to draw a line about 3 eighths of an inch around the perimeter. At the table saw, I'll remove most of the waste. And then I'll take one more pass to shave off the majority of the burn marks. And this is just going to help during the next phase of sanding. I'll also cut the blank, the rough length at the table saw using the miter gauge. Next, it's off to the band saw to shape the ends. But don't cut too close to the line. You'll sand it the final shape at the oscillating bolt sander. Slow and steady here, using your pencil mark as a guide. And be sure to clean the belt often. I'll do a bit more sanding on the bottom, the sides, and the ends, finishing up with the 220 grit sandpaper. You want these surfaces to be perfectly smooth in preparation for the roundovers that are coming next. I'm using a bearing guided quarter inch roundover bit here to route the outer perimeter of the bowl. Once that's done, I'll route the interior of the bowl. The bearing is doing the work in this pass. To route the bottom, I'm using the same technique as before, this time with a bearing guided one half inch roundover bit. I'll raise the bit to final height and make one more pass. I find this to be easier on the bit with less potential for burning. Sometimes a roundover is the look I want. But to achieve a shoulder, simply raise the bit. And again, I'll do this in more than one pass to arrive at the desired shoulder. It seems like we're never done sanding, but we are getting close. A Little bit of sanding with the random orbit sander and some hand sanding. You just need to smooth the roundovers to perfection. So there you have it, routed bowls using the CMT tray and bowl bit and call it extension. As for finishing, it's really up to you. I've used butcher block oil. I've used a gloss polyurethane. I really like this. This is a spray lacquer and I really like the look of that. And I've used my old standby and one of my favorites, the satin gel finish. I hope we've inspired you to give this a try. A little bit of time in your shop and you're gonna have something to be really proud of. And my suggestion to you would be, if you're gonna build one, build more than one. To get your tray and bowl bit and call it extension, click on the link below and have some fun. And to receive weekly videos like this one, Sign up for our free eNote video tips by going to thewitsmithstore.com. When you do, you'll receive $25 in online gift certificates as a bonus. And just so you don't miss anything, be sure to subscribe to our Witsmith Store YouTube channel.